Hello again, and welcome to another Times Ticking YouTube video. Today we're going to be discussing the two branches of Seiko that were once at war with one another to see who would take over the design work for the entire brand. There's some history built into this one, so stick with us through this intro, and we're going to dive into it with you. So the history of Daini and Sua, the two branches that eventually went into an arms race over Seiko's design, is built into the original history of Seiko, which started all the way back in the 19th century. As westernization swept over Japan during the late 19th century into the 20th, the import and demand for traditionally European time tellers impacted Japanese industrialization. This is an important part of Seiko founder Kentaro Hattori's story. His brand started out with the fixing and selling of Western imported clocks in 1881. After nine years of success in Tokyo, Kei Hattori opened his Seikosha factory. Seikosha meaning exquisite or successful business in English. This factory became repurposed due to a war with Russia from 1904 to 1905, where the two empires clashed over Manchurian and Korean territory. Although making war materials for this conflict was far from horological, it gave Kei Hattori insights into mass production. His new relationship with this style of manufacture laid the foundation for what would be one of the biggest watch brands in history. Although Kei Hattori's initial efforts in manufacturing were successful, something very difficult came up in the 1920s for his company. In 1923, a devastating earthquake hit Japan and destroyed most of Tokyo. Known as the Great Kanto Earthquake, this natural disaster leveled the original Seikosha factory, kicked up multiple firestorms, and spawned a fire tornado in the heart of Tokyo. Astonishingly, just one month after this monstrous quake, Kei Hattori was back to business. By 1924, his company Kei Hattori & Company introduced the brand Seiko, a fitting name for a brand that triumphed through one of the greatest earthquakes in human history, considering that it meant success. In that same year, the Seiko brand began introducing its first original pocket watches. Kei Hattori's timepieces continued to gain notoriety for efficiency and quality manufacturing as Seiko moved forward. From the mid-1920s until the late 1930s, Kei Hattori diversified the manufacturing aspect of his business, which meant requiring a whole timepiece division of his brand. By 1937, three years after Kei Hattori's death, Seiko opened their Daini Seikosha division to focus on time-oriented endeavors. Daini meant second in Japanese, and it's actually the first of the two branches that would come to compete for design work in the company. Although things were highly successful for Seiko up until the point of opening the Daini factory in 1937, war once again came into the picture, putting Seiko back into wartime production. For the sake of brevity, the Second Great War was not friendly to Seiko. By the end of World War II, all Seiko factories were destroyed, except for one, their Sua Seikosha factory. Though the original Daini factory got destroyed, it would eventually get rebuilt and compete with Sua. Indeed, during the time of the Cold War between America and Russia, Seiko had its own sort of arms race. Over the decade following Japan's World War defeat, Seiko had rebuilt its Daini Seikosha factory. Having both Sua and Daini as separate entities of the same brand would become a company-wide attempt to promote healthy competition in design. However, before the mid-1950s, Seiko had never established a dedicated design team for its timepieces, even though they were the highest sold timepieces in all of Japan. In terms of their business, the idea of having a watch designer had been a bit of a foreign concept. So taking up the mantle first, Sua Seiko began its own design department in 1956. Their design team mostly covered the dial, leaving the rest of the design work to the team building the original watch cases. Two years after Sua started their design team, Daini Seiko began hiring college-level design graduates to work on their productions. Thus came the battle for supremacy between two separate subsidiaries of Seiko in the year 1959. It became a test of each division's prowess in developing beautiful design work as well as new movement tech for the brand. To differentiate between the two arms of Seiko, each had their own original maker's mark. Sua Seiko used a Whirlpool logo on their dials, while Daini used a two triangle or lightning bolt logo. On top of this competition, Kei Hattori & Co. hired designer Taro Tanaka to oversee Seiko design work. 
His influence would be substantial for the brand from his time with Seiko and beyond. The most notable competition between these two divisions of Seiko was the Grand Seiko by Sua and the King Seiko by Daini. Originally kicking off the 1960 release of the Grand Seiko, this competition saw many great innovations and movement design for the Seiko brand. The Grand and King square off lasted well into the 1980s, flowing right through the Quartz Revolution, which put Japanese watchmakers front and center for consumer timepieces. With skillful design innovations both inside and outside of their watches, healthy competition between Daini and Sua Seiko developed a truly powerful reputation for the Seiko brand, which persists to this very day. As a modern brand that has a huge hold on watchmaking globally, Seiko still continues to work well with the designs that came out of this competition. That being said, ultimately, Sua won out regarding the most popular Seiko styles. Their designs are still leaned upon the most in terms of today's sales. However, many Daini watches have made it to market and are favorite pieces to a sizable group of watch collectors. The differentiation between these two divisions of Seiko can add or decrease the relative monetary value of one of their watches, but not by much. So whether one has a King or Grand Seiko, or any other Seiko for that matter, they'll have a solidly comparable watch from one of Seiko's two great arms. Each of these limbs has grown from the trunk of a rich history, been nourished by horological ingenuity, and are taking root in the labors of Kentaro Hattori. Hello, and thanks for watching our YouTube video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and you can find similar videos right here. For more new and interesting content from Time Sticking on our channel, please subscribe at the link here. And for more information about wristwatch repair and watch maintenance generally, you can find us at timesticking.com. Thanks so much, and have a great day.